Hello viewers and welcome once again to a very special program. This discussion is all about the culture of integrity for the nation's prosperity. Well, every year, Vigilance Awareness Week is observed all across the country and it is a day kept aside an initiative of the Central Vigilance Commission to speak about the culture of vigilance to bring about integrity in governance, etc. Now, this is an initiative that has been going on for some years now, especially to build awareness among the public and uh, towards our commitment to create an environment where we come out of corruption, especially in public offices and public governance. Well, this week is also, it also is held every year during the birth anniversary because the birth anniversary of Bharat Ratna, uh, that is Vallabhai Patel falls on 31st of October. And well, this week is also kept aside, keeping this great tall man in ahead of us because he was a man of integrity and that is what he did. So today we are gathered here to talk about the need for transparency, the need for accountability and the need for honesty and corruption free governance, especially in the public domain. To talk about this important aspect, we are being joined by a panel here. So let me go ahead and introduce them to you. To my left is uh, Angela Rangad. She is an activist and a tour leader. We are also being joined at the center by Pink San Aim. He is the faculty department of political science from St. Edmunds College here in Shillong. We also have with us to the extreme uh, left is the state chief information commissioner. He is uh, Sri Heimon Lang Nongklu. So there we have our panelists here. So I hope you will continue to remain with us and uh, well, listen to what the panelists have to say and also enjoy this program. Thank you so much to each of our panelists here for coming to Doordarshan and giving us your time. I would like, I'd like to begin by addressing the first question to you, Angela. You are somebody who have always spoken against corruption, have always upholded it to a large extent as much as you could. How important is, uh, you know, to create an atmosphere where there is no corruption, especially when we are talking about public governance? Thank you, Moshmi. Um, I think uh, corruption now is a word which uh, is overused. Uh, if you ask anybody, everybody is against corruption. Uh, it's very easy also to stand and say that, you know, uh, you are against corruption. However, many a times we don't understand the weight of the word. Mm -hmm. uh, I think it's very important to look at corruption in a wider way. Uh, we have always maintained, especially when we were in the movements demanding for certain legislations that will uh, help bring about mm, accountability and transparency. We have always said that corruption is about an abuse of power. Mm -hmm. It's not just about you know monetary corruption, it's not right. about pilferage, but also about how sometimes uh, certain posts, certain jobs are given to certain people, that is also corruption. Mm -hmm. Or that, uh, you know, you uh, compromise certain public services, uh, that also is corruption. So we have to view corruption in a, a really wide way of looking at it as an abuse of power. And it is important to check abuse of power because mm -hmm. um, I know that governance, government is about supposedly, supposedly about we the people, for the people, by the people. Mm -hmm. But eventually, uh, if uh, people in power are not held to account and uh, people as it is uh, have diminished rights to question, then there will always be an abuse and that will mean that the, the, it continues, the fallout right? is yeah. on the people. Right? right. So we will come back to you once again, but let me just bring in uh, Sri Nongplu here. Sir, you are the State Chief Information Commissioner. Tell us a little bit about this, uh, this institution, this commission that you're heading. What is its main task largely? <coughs> well, uh, first of all, uh, our chairman today, Dr. Moshmi, our my co panels, uh, Kong Angela and Ba Pankhsan. First of all, I think I should. Uh, send my greetings to you for this uh, Vigilance Week right. that the Central Vigilance Commission has uh, <coughs> celebrated almost mm -hmm. every year. Mm -hmm. And uh, you see every year they have a sub-theme. 
And to this year's sub theme is about culture of, of integrity, integrity for na national uh, prosperity. Right. So that is the theme for this, this year's celebration. Uh, you have uh, asked about the <coughs> Information Commission. This is actually, it comes out of a very important act. Actually, it's been called the landmark judgment in the country, which came in the year 2005. Because prior to the, to the year 2005, uh, Kong Angela will bear with me, it's very difficult to get information from any of the government departments. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, because there is no enabling act. Right. So when the act comes into force, all the government departments have to put an uh, officer uh, called the PIO and in the central SPIO. And of course, they have a, a first ap uh, appeal and then the second appeal. So the commission basically looks uh, if the applicant for right for the information from the officer in the department, if they don't give, then the uh, applicant can come directly to the commission in the form of a complaint. Right. And if, even if they give, if they are not satisfied, they can go to the first appellate authority. And then if they are not satisfied with the first appellate authority, then they can come to the commission for as a second appeal. But this act is also part of uh, preventing uh, uh, corruption, so to say, but also to bring in transparency. Transparency, transparency right. actually, if it comes through, mm -hmm. then uh, it is expected that corruption will diminish a bit mm -hmm. because right. okay. people will come to know what is okay. happening actually. Okay, right. We'll come back to you as well. Let me bring here Peng San. Um, you know, uh, you are a, a teacher of political science and as I said right in the beginning, this Awareness Week is being celebrated, you know, or observed rather, keeping our Bharat Ratna Sardar Vallabhai Patel, who was once upon a time the Deputy Prime Minister of the country and later on held many other positions also. He was a man who was also known as an Iron Man of the country, who was relentless when it came uh, to you know, development of the nation. He united the country, political unity, he was the one, you know, he, he was a man of integrity. So what, do you, what can you say about this man himself as we bring him back from the pages of history to, I mean, to this uh, discussion and to our everyday, you know, uh, like the way we conduct ourselves, how important are his vision even up to this day? When we talk about um, Sardar Vallabh Bhai Patel, he was a man of integrity, as mm -hmm. you've mentioned, but he was also a man of principles. Now, when we have to look at these modern philosophies today that are becoming very popular amongst the youths, mm. such as Stoicism and Realism, Sardar Vallabhai Patel already had those qualities. And, you know, when we look at Stoicism, we have to talk about the ancient Greeks, such as Epictetus and Marcus Aurelius. And we look at Realism, we have to talk about Machiavelli and many others. So, our you know, our youths from India, as well as Northeast India, do not have to look far because of the fact that we have famous personalities such as Sardar Vallabhai Patel. Yeah. And the, you know, the Awareness Week for this, for, this time of the, uh, for this time around as well, we talk about integrity, the word here is integrity and integration, mm -hmm. where Sardar Vallabhai Patel played a very important role into integrating the princely states in the Indian Union and the India that we have today. So, but the one th quality that I believe that the youths can learn from him mm. and why he's so, and why he has to be popular is because of the fact that he was a realist and a stoic. And yes, there are differences between him and Jawaharlal Nehru, right. but he stuck to his principles yeah. and he stuck to the agreements as well that he had with the princely states. Yeah, he was so very, very, exactly. very, very uncompromising in yes, his attitude. Exactly. Like what he believed mm. in, he made ensured that, you know, he fulfilled it. Yes. Right? And I think, uh, Angela, that is what sometimes is lacking, I suppose, in present governance, because governance comes from the bottom, governance also comes from the top. So when we are talking about lack of you know, integrity, whose onus is it really to bring about uh, you know, a corruption-free uh, situation or an office or whichever ways we look at it? Whose responsibility? Is it the people who need to keep uh. in check? Or is it from the top only that should percolate down as well? No, I think first of all we have to understand uh, uh, corruption also, that it happens at various levels, right? right? Mm. So there's big ticket corruption, like we saw with the SEBI chief and 
that Srimati Butch, which mm. the inquiry is happening right now. But we also have small ticket uh, corruption, uh, which is actually very difficult uh, to also uh, monitor. Mm. And uh, just as an example, like if you're applying for a license and uh, you go to the authorities, there will be lots of dalals there, people working within that setup, who are trying to uh, make a quick buck from you right. for so something which you ought to be right. getting easily. And so, so often it is done in the open, actually, in yeah. full public view. So when, when, when you say, uh, where should the buck stop? stop right. I think that we need systems, we need institutions, uh, but also people have to access, have to use these institutions, right? And it is really interesting because finally, as Ba Nong Plo said, uh, after independence, it was only in 2005 that we got the Right to Information yeah. Act, and it was a landmark act because till then, we were treated like subjects mm -hmm. who didn't have the right to question, question to ask right. for files. Mm -hmm. Now, any one of us can walk into an office, ask for file notings, <laughs> ask for files, read who said what and why, mm -hmm. and uh, we can then create a picture of mm. why a certain decision was taken, whether it was favoring perp you know, purposely somebody uh, to the detriment of somebody else. However, when the act came about, people were very skepti skeptical. They said that, you know, it's so complicated. People in the rural areas will not be able to use it. Mm -hmm. But our experience as a campaign has been that the most illiterate person also in a village has been able to make use of Access. this empowering mm. legislation. Right. They write in Khasi, they ask for what has happened to their rations, to their housing, and it has made a huge difference. Okay. So now, even if you have legislations, institutions, but if people do not use these, you know, to bring about transparency and accountability, mm. Mm. then it will be a problem. And transparency and accountability will never come from the top. Mm -hmm. Because I think it's going to take a long time for us to shed that kind of you know, colonial hang up of, you know, this, the, the ones who are the subjects and the rural oh. rulers. Okay. So, yeah. No, because we are here, uh, um, uh, Sri Nongplu, we are talking about the culture, you know, the culture that, and culture is something that is ingrained. So have we also ingrained corruption so deep in, in, in us that it has gone so embedded in us that we are in this day and time now that we are talking about removing it, taking it out. And it will not be an easy task. What is your thought really when, when it comes to people's behavior of accepting you know, corrupt practices also? Because I think we have internalized a lot of it as well. Okay. Yes, I think I need to clarify a bit also mm. on this uh, Vigilance Week. Because I think we tend to look at the government, mostly. Mm. But if you see this pledge that right. the CBC has made, no, it's, it's not for government servants, it's for citizens. Mm -hmm. Actually, it's for all. Everybody. Okay, because uh, the government is in power, which the first is from them. But if you look at the pledge, it says it's not about only corruption, it's about integrity mm -hmm. in everything that we do. Right. Okay, uh, the government, since they, are, uh, they have the power, then the uh, main target is mm -hmm. there. But look at day-to-day uh, -day life. Mm -hmm. There, is there any integrity in trade? Is there any integrity uh, in the shopkeepers? There are many. With now they have put the maximum uh, price. But when you go and buy, you will find that the price is much less. Yeah. And you don't know where the minimum will go. Mm -hmm. So those type of integrity is also required. Yeah. So, the, so the, that's the why people should be more yes. responsible what, also. What, what yeah. uh, my experience mm. uh, in the government and uh, after interacting with people, uh, I find that uh, greed is the whole issue here mm -hmm. that and there is no limit to greed mm. because people cannot be satisfied mm -hmm. and also if we talk of corruption there are two hands involved mm. one is the taker Give and, and one, one is yeah. the giver yeah. so that's why in the prevention of corruption act bribe giving is also a crime actually mm -hmm. so the the whole society needs to change we yeah. have to look okay those who are in power first they have to be changed but as a society also, we have to change. Absolutely. Because Our you see that, yes. yes. You see, and the problem is more nowadays because of the commercialism that mm. we are facing mm. and the, 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 the aspiration of the people has gone up mm. and up. Mm. Mm -hmm. uh, I was uh, speaking in another function yesterday. I was telling that when we were children, actually, we, 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 
we are afraid to wear good shoes, good clothes, because our friends will tease us. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but now it's the other way around, actually. Right. Children, if they don't have the branded uh, shoe, mm. branded mm, jacket, their friends will tease them. Right. So in this culture, it becomes very difficult mm. that uh, the, for the people who are in power to, uh, to, to avoid corruption. Right. And also, I, let, let me ask, uh, mm. permit me to say one thing also, that uh, it is very difficult because uh, of this commercialism. And also, you see, uh, why these acts and rules and uh, RTI and then uh, Service Delivery Commission, mm. so many commissions mm. are there. The problem is that what I have found is that uh, I don't know the percentage, but maybe Kong Angela will enlighten us. But I feel that 90% of the people mm. will do it if they know that they are not going to get caught. Mm. Mm. Exactly. I don't know how, that, that how, how much percentage of people mm. will not do it mm. because they feel that it's right not to do it. Absolutely. So That's my what I'm our is culture our point us. is to mm. bring the people mm. to this culture mm. of doing it because it's right. It is right, not yeah. because they are not going to get caught. Mm -hmm. There are some people who appears to be in, to be, uh, they don't uh, do corruption. But once they know that they are not go going to get mm -hmm. caught, it's very difficult. The yeah, temptation absolutely. is too th much. These are very important yes. points that you have just brought out. You know, that it, it, it uh, you know, corruption has become part of our culture. Pinskan, you are a youth. You, you, you have just you got into a job after finishing your studies. I'm sure you have so much more aspirations. But where do you think sometimes you know we are going wrong, and who do you think will should correct as a youth yourself, as a young individual yourself? Do you think the who's who should change actually? Who can bring about this change? As uh, Sir has rightly mentioned, that it's both ways. Mm the government and the people themselves. Because at the end of the day, we have to remind ourselves that India is a democracy. Mm. And, the rep and the politicians that we have in our legislative assembly and our parliament, we the citizens elected them mm. in power. Mm. Now, when I talk about corruption, I have to look at it from two points of views. One as an idealist and the other as a realist. Mm. As an idealist, trying to attain or achieve a corruption-free society is the best. Mm -hmm. But as a realist, mm. it's close to impossibility. What I would like to prefer, instead of saying corruption-free, I would like to prefer what has been mentioned earlier, transparency. Mm -hmm. And again, uh, stating what Sir has mentioned, that it is the citizens who also have to take care. Mm. Now, if the choice for citizens, they have to do it not because they're af that they should be afraid of the law, but because it's instilled in them, I believe that education is very important. Right. And another, another aspect that I want to highlight here is what exactly is corruption mm. for them? And because in our day-to-day -day lives, corruption or the word corrupt itself, it's imprinted. And for example, I can mention that f the word momo, favorite delicacy of most of the Northeasterners, for us it's just a food item. But people have corrupted in some parts of India to connote a derogatory term towards it re regarding the Northeastern people. So. Who exactly to blame? We have no one else to blame but ourselves. Sense, right. Because we allowed it to happen. happen. And, and you've seen in every society, whether we go to funeral homes or whether we go to parties, we sit down in a crowd. The first thing people like to do or the first thing they like to start conversations are always complaining. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but will they do anything about it? They're not sure what to do. Okay. Yeah, so the, the, this is what the crux is, isn't it, Angela, that we, we speak, as you said in the beginning, we talk about it, but we are not willing to do anything about it. And thereby what is happening is that this whole culture is increasing day by day. For a simple act, the other day I saw that a person had to take out his, uh, his uh, retirement money, his pension money, and he has to beg you know, to an officer who has to pass his file. And he was caught, of course, red-handed, offering a bribe of one lakh. Now, this is just one case. It didn't happen here, of course. It happened with our neighborly states. But the thing question is that there's so many such cases that keep on happening that we are not even aware of, right? 
Therefore, you know, you have fought so hard about it, you know. Where do you think still the problem lies? Where, where can we change ourselves? At what level does that change begin? From which are those little habits that we should weed away so that, you know, we don't indulge into that as we grow up later? So to answer that, I think I also want to just make a comment on what mm. uh, Nongklo was saying, that, mm. you know, uh, the way society has evolved, the way our economic system has evolved, our political system, uh, now it's so governed by, uh, you know, a world order, a capitalistic order where actually, I mean, you mentioned the word greed, but actually this idea of accumulation. Yeah, materialism. There's just, there's just mm. no um, end to it. End to it yeah. No? And uh, earlier, uh, when uh, we hadn't liberalized our country, our underdevelopment, everything was blamed on that, mm -hmm. that we should open up our economy, bring in corporations and companies because they have systems in place and that they will function better than governments. But we have seen what is the culture that corporations <laughs> and companies have brought in mm -hmm. is actually you, you have corruption inbuilt into your mm -hmm. system. You know, you, you actually already have plans in place of how you uh, put forward a contract, how you calculate how much you're going to give who, mm. and how you're going to win a contract. And uh, just as an example, the phone companies that all of us have been forced to subscribe to, they change their policy mm. without any consultation, without any transparency. They up their rates. Uh, they don't provide proper services and yet there's no accountability. Mm -hmm. Look at no? our roads, you know, our roads are built so every other day and <laughs> within no time they are all shattered again and nowadays they said write the name of the contractor and whoever the engineer who built the roads. I mean that is one way no. of people so addressing it. So there are systems in, I mean, uh, people's movements have, have tried to mm. look at what do we do as mm. a society. So yes, we demand legislations but legislations many times uh, become just you know words on on paper if they're not used or uh, people in power always try to misuse the legislation or skirt around yeah, the legislation right. right and most of the legislations have been geared towards uh, transparency but till now uh, there are not too many systems in place for accountability mm -hmm. what happens after you find out that something has gone wrong a bad decision has been taken because mm -hmm. you know of a bribe so that is precisely why, for instance, when we were fighting for the right to information, we were hoping that after a while, the right to information in itself will be redundant. Because if the government uh, operates in a transparent manner, in fact, Baanong Plo will talk to you about mm. Section 4 of the Act, mm. which imagines proactive disclosure, mm. that every government department ought to be operating yeah. transparently. Or we should On know what's own. happening there. Right, right, uh, right. How much money, who mm. gets what even pay of people who are there, you know, who, uh, which scheme has gone to who, and all that okay. should just be shared mm. before somebody needs to ask a question. Mm. Now, if that is being done, yeah. then things, systems move. Right. But now, if that is not being done, and if through finding, through use of RTI, etc., people are able to locate, you know, an abuse of power or corruption, now what do you do about that? Mm -hmm. So that is when actually as a movement we demanded for the Lokayukta right. as a body that will automatically look into, you know, graft mm. charges. They can even on their own, Suomoto, right. if they mm. see some reporting in the newspapers. But again, the Lokayukta Act has been subverted in our state mm -hmm. and it has been a non-starter actually, unfortunately, after a very long fight. Uh, to get the act we have one of the best legislations in the country because we had compared you know with other and clause by clause we fought for okay. it we were outside the assembly fighting for this right right but we, it we has gone the that, same yeah. way as the lokpal mm -hmm. i mean nationally the lokpal also what has it done yeah so but, but 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 we are here not to just only find problems we know that there is corruption but we are also talking here to root it out to find ways how we as individuals can play a role so as we are almost actually winding up you know because you know the program is not too long enough so as a, so what kind of role can each of us as i said i asked a question from where should it begin that we ourselves as individuals we become more careful that we will refuse to give a bribe to somebody or you know we may have to fight it hard and long it doesn't matter your comments on that Yes, I agree that, uh, of course, it has to come from mm. individual citizen. If they fight, if they don't give, then... But the problem is that uh, whatever you say, the bribe giver also benefits. 
mm. actually in most of the cases he benefits so he will not report it so that that problem is always there but i would also like to say that we have progress right. in spite of all what mm. kong angela said and all we know that there are hiccups there are problems acts are been have been legislated not implemented maybe in the right whatever mm -hmm. but but uh, i would say that maybe 30 years back or 40 years back we wouldn't imagine that a chief minister will go to jail or he be convicted of corruption cases right, right. but that is happening mm. so uh, of course let, mean, like, like you said what we saw the assam public service commission yes. chairman is in the jail yes. and yes, for the jail. all yeah and, no, mean, no 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 yeah. people as high as mm. chief ministers mm -hmm. have been convicted they've right. gone to jail mm -hmm. so this uh, it's unthinkable maybe right. 30 40 years mm. back of course we have uh, so much to to go forward in order to eliminate this thing but we can't say that we have not made progress all, we have right. made progress mm. we of course uh, uh, quite uh, good work has been done by activists like right. kong angela right. and mm. many other activists actually un unless they make noise nothing will change but we we are changing that's right. what i would like you that, said in that, the that, beginning yeah. of the program yeah. let us be optimistic so mm. let us end in optimistic <laughs> yeah. mode that we are that progressing is true what you say we are progressing mm. and, and then acts have been put in place some have not functioned properly okay uh, when people make noise and uh, at right time maybe some other changes will take place and also we have, we realize that people now are not keeping quiet mm -hmm. not keeping quiet and in, that is the beauty their, and thrive uh, yes. uh, you know how and our democracy is thriving uh, actually right and, uh, and i'll yeah. i let me also yeah. say one more thing their generation now yeah. with the coming of social mm. media everything is in the open right uh, we, 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 you cannot hide anything now it's, it's coming out mm. so people we, we, we hope that uh, things will change for the better mm -hmm. in the future with so many uh, check and balances put in place of course we have still a long way mm. because uh, we have to be as a society itself you see if you talk about all these government uh, officer uh, official politicians from where they come they come from amongst society. us only, exactly. only so unless we as a so society change so we don't expect that uh, things will change but uh, i feel that we are moving in the right di direction the pace may be not <laughs> as yeah, fast as, as we want it yeah. but it every change takes time yes, but yes. process as you said has certainly begun and the fact that you know anybody can actually use the weapon of an rti and get information that wasn't so there i mean mm. panskan would you would you also be as optimistic as sir what mm. he said that the change is happening and youths like you and generation you know uh, below you also should be the you know the torch bearer really <coughs> to root out such evils of our society when we talk about such evils in our society we have to understand one particular sentence that i would like to use india has a complex culture mm -hmm. so for a complex culture it will have complex questions mm -hmm. which will require complex answers right. now when we talk about rooting out the evils mm. as uh, has been mentioned earlier how exactly do we make sure that people do not accept bribes mm. and do not accept this and do not accept that as a society i believe that we love to glorify the history we love to glorify our past glorify what exactly we're not really sure because there's a question mark when it comes to almost everything and when we talk about policies and schemes yes it's good to take the ideas of different constitutions different governments but i also believe that we should not forget our own rules our own policies traditional policies that we already have mm -hmm. if you have a mixture of both of them you intertwine them together then we can say that people will actually understand that you know this is wrong what i'm doing is actually wrong because for for various societies what is considered moral in this society may not be considered moral in another society mm -hmm. and you know if you can instill people through education even at the the most rural parts of india or anywhere else where you can tell people you can highlight the the you know because each and every culture each and every traditional religion or anything for that matter will always talk about corruption and they'll always talk about how bad it is in their own perspective mm -hmm. now if we can understand it from our own localized perspective of what corruption really is mm -hmm. then i have a very positive outlook that we can fight corruption but if we're looking at corruption from a western perspective or from another person's perspective then it would be very difficult for us to actually understand 
how exactly to fight it. Right. So I think at the end of the day, we no need to go back to our roots. You know, much of what we are today is because we have embraced too much of other cultures and we have forgotten our own, you know, roots from where we come from. And I think our roots were always strong and always not filled with all these, uh, uh, again, quote unquote, evils that we are talking about today. So as we are wrapping up, how optimistic are you, Angela? And do you think that, you know, right from childhood, when we raise children, we often bribe a child also that if you do this, I'll give you this. Should it actually begin from there so that when the child grows up one day, he will neither expect nor give? Easier to say, I know, yeah. but I think, you know, we should now build a culture, as I said, you know, build a society where we I will learn to say there, no. There's so many institutions that influence a child, mm. right? Okay, family is one, yeah. but they step very out, strong, they go to strong, a yes. school, mm. college, peers, uh, not to forget religious institutions, because m many times, especially when it uh, has to do with corruption. People look towards the religious institutions to be able to stem corruption, but there's corruption within the <laughs> religious institutions mm. as well. Uh, but I think that uh, if you look at it from the point of view of raising a vigilant citizen, yeah. I think that it's very important to have a household where you are discussing politics, as in politics meaning, you know, talking about questioning about power right. and power means even within a family everybody's trying oh. to exert oh. power oh. but this idea of power and what abuse of power can do is something I think that a child can understand right. and if I think um, the idea of power of control oh. and of how that can go so wrong and how it means that you are taking somebody else's share somebody else's rights if you're abusing power that is something which we can I think try to teach at the household at level, that level. Okay. and uh, it will go a long way in actually um, creating active citizens that are not afraid of questioning. Right. Because once we question, then, you know. And we, I think yeah. as, as a society, as individuals, as government officials and everybody who are playing, you know, various stakes in the society, we also need to be vigilant, you know. You know, we shouldn't be scared of, uh, you know, reporting such matters because if we don't report, then how can we make mm -hmm. a change? I think on that note, that's all the time that allows us to discuss really. We hope, as uh, uh, Sir Nongplu has said, that there is, we are going in the right direction. Better days are awaiting. The, you know, the start is going on. And with the right uh, kind of uh, uh, laws that we have in place and with people being also actively involved to root out corruption, we will all be good. Thank you so much, all of you, for coming to the studios of Doordarshan and discussing about the culture of integrity for national prosperity that we are talking about. Well then, viewers, that's how our discussion went today. I hope you have uh, enjoyed watching this. And uh, well, until next time, from all of us here, it's wishing you goodbye.